So I'll share a fun project with you today, making the heat control for the cockpit electrically actuated instead of using a uh, control cable. Here's how we did it on the four. So I did the same thing on the RV-8, uh, but it was more out of desire than it is out of necessity, more on the RV-4. Uh, so space is always limited on the firewall. So we're going to use this little electrically actuated arm from TCW Technologies to control the heat on and off. So the first thing to do is to create a big piece of aluminum, much bigger than we're going to need at the end, that then gets drilled and eventually riveted to the door that opens and closes uh, the heat access to the cockpit. Now normally the control cable would hook up to that small steel actuator arm that you see there, a bit hard to see kind of in the middle, um, but we want to put it on the side so it doesn't get the heat blast. And then we're going to put this on the firewall facing up so you can see in the RV4 that space is always kind of limited, uh, so that's essentially why we're doing it. Now. Here's kind of the high school geometry lesson here, is we need to figure out where to drill that hole so that we have a one and quarter inch throw in the arm. So the lower down we drill the hole, the smaller throw that we get, and it ends up being way too small at the, at the bottom. It's about three quarters of an inch. And then at the top here, it's about an inch and a half. So somewhere between there and the bottom, we need to figure out where is it gonna equal an inch and a quarter so we can drill our hole because we don't want that electrical actuator arm to bottom out because eventually it will burn out if we do that. So we figured it out just by measuring with a ruler and then we'll show you in a second here that we'll use the actual uh, actuator arm drilled into the workbench to make sure that our measurements uh, were proper. So there the arm is fully retracted and lining it up carefully with that, with the uh, mark that we made on the actuator arm, and then making a mark on the workbench to see kind of where that where that would end up being mounted on the firewall. And there now it's fully extended. So again, figuring out where exactly does that one and quarter inch arm throw um, work out for attaching the the number eight screw at the end. So I'll just mark that on the workbench and we'll eventually drill it to the workbench and make sure that we got all the measurements done. So you can see that the arm, or rather the, uh, the heat muff, is actually um, bolted and clecoed to the workbench. So now we'll screw in the little actuator arm bracket and we'll make sure that our measurements are correct before we transfer all of these measurements to the firewall and start drilling holes. So there's a number eight screw holding the actuator arm in. You may have to sand the base of the actuator arm a little bit uh, to get it to fit properly. So there it's fully extended, making sure that it lines up properly. And when it's fully retracted again, making sure that it lines up properly with the measurements that we took. Doing all this on a piece of wood so that we can then come up with the measurements that we're going to transfer to the firewall. So we have two holes there that will be A and 3 bolts, and then we have that single hole that holds the actuator arm, which will be a number 8 screw. And then we'll just measure off the workbench as best as we can here, and we find that the actuator arm actually sits a little bit lower than that top bolt that will go into the heat control valve. It's quite small, it's only 5 30 seconds of an inch. And then it's to the right, about an inch and three quarters. So we'll transfer that to the firewall and the measurements should work. Now remember with your actuator arm or your heat control valve, it may be a little bit different. So there's what the actuator arm looked like in the end after we trim it down as much as we can. And now we have the engine actually hanging in place to make sure that we're not going to get any interference with where we're going to put this uh, cockpit heat control. So we're just, the engine is not bolted on right now. It's just hoisted up in the air, sitting approximately where it's going to be. 
We just want to make sure that we're going to have a nice uh, clearance. Now we went and drilled the holes using a, a Unibit and a Dremel tool, AN3 holes, so number 12 holes, and then we bolt the actual control valve in and the little bracket to hold the actuator arm. Now everything's bolted in, we give it a test, it's fully closed and fully open. That would give us cockpit heat going that direction. So it's a nice way when you're when you have confined space uh, to control it. Again, this is going to be fully open or fully closed um, because we actually have an eyeball uh, vent that we can regulate the heat with. So it's just fully open or fully closed. There's no rheostat on it. And we can just control the amount of heat by opening and closing that aluminum vent. All right, now how do we wire this? So we're going to use a 2-3 switch which has six terminals in the back it's a simple on off switch but when you turn it on it's going to connect the two bottom terminals and when it's off it connects the two top terminals so on the center terminals that one we're going to connect to the main fuse block so that will be the power side and then the other side we'll connect to the ground bus And then the bottom two tabs, here's our control arm. And again, this is just a simple one that has a power and ground. There is another control arm that you can buy that actually has a real stat knob with it. And that'll be six wires instead of just two. And that would be so you could partially open it. But not required for this case, so really simple. Connecting the red wire to one side and the black wire to the other side. And then we need to reverse the polarity to get this open and closed. So we run a wire diagonally from the bottom left terminal to the top right. And then we run a second wire from the top left terminal to the bottom right. And what that's going to do for us is when the switch is in the up position, it's going to provide a, a positive to one wire and a negative to the other. And when it's in the down position, it's going to reverse the polarity. And that's what we want. So how does that work? In the up position, it connects those two terminals and those two terminals, so it just puts plus to the red and ground to the black. But when it's down, it's going to connect those two top terminals, which essentially puts positive to now the black wire. And then it connects the other two top right ones, and that is going to put ground essentially to the red wire. So that's how we reverse the polarity, just by a simple up and down switch. And if it doesn't work in the proper direction that you want, then you can just reverse the center two posts there, the plus and the ground. So you can reverse those the other way if it doesn't work the direction that you desire. You could reverse the actual wires on the arm, but that would be a little bit more work because you have the cross wires. So there you go. Build yourself something. Take it for rip. But we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.